6.32 Is that it? Are you really happy with that? You do remember it was lighter in your old 1Y setup. Son of a... This is why I obsess about weight. Well, I guess it's how I justify obsessing about weight. Now, in the summer last year, when I went back to a two by setup on this Trek Amunda, I really started to regret my original decision to go with a 130 BDC. That's not correct, it's BCD uh, on my original clavicular crank and that meant I couldn't fit compact rings on that crank so already then my subconscious twisted mind had already decided that the last piece of this Amonda puzzle would be a compact compatible THM crank and yes some people are that sick in the brain that they buy two of them and when I eventually sold my 12-speed Dura-Ace crank, I thought that would be the perfect opportunity to give myself the ultimate Christmas present this year. That being said, I don't think this is a sane decision and I definitely don't recommend people go out and buy this crank because it's pretty insane what you can get for the money. You can, for example, get two Dura-Ace cranks for the price of this one without rings. And if you're even more twisted than me, you can get, say, like two and a half ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel cages, if you're into that weird fetish. But if you are like me and have a couple of screws loose up in the dome, well, you are my people. And for you guys, I will take you inside and show you this exquisite piece of art up close and personal. So this is it, the pinnacle of bike part porn. I could just stare at this thing forever. That would be a slightly awkward video though. So on to some specifications. This is a compact crank, 110 millimeters BCD, 172.5 millimeter crank arm length. And as you can see, it has the very nice glossy finish. As it's pretty much the lightest crank plus spider in the world, claimed weight at 293 grams, I was really hoping to land under 300 grams. In reality it was 305 grams. From my experience with THM products, they always seem to come in slightly overweight. For reference, my matte finish 130 BCD version claimed at 302 grams came in at 310 grams. Same with my THM handlebar also came in slightly overweight. Still no need to cry over a few grams, right? Over to the other deliciousness that is the carbon tie X carbo ring chain rings in a compact configuration 5034 beautiful body of carbon with cnc machine chain ring teeth in aluminium and shift pins in titanium i should also point out that these are the standard 11 and 12 speed compatible shimano sram campy rings that's been out for a while it's not the sram flat top chain compatible ones and it's not the new evo version uh, that was released after I ordered these. Those are specifically made for the new Shimano 12 speed, but these have still worked without any major issues for me. Had I bought them today though, I would definitely have gone with the Evo rings if I had that choice. 
87.8 grams for the big ring, 28.9 for the small, so that's only 117 grams for the set. I kept the chainring bolts in the family with carbon tie, 8.4 grams for 5 bolts. All this put together, we have a complete 2x crank set with rings at 430 grams. Boom. For reference again, you might remember from my previous Durace 12 speed video, the new Durace crank is 689 grams and the Easton EC90 that this will replace was 586 grams. So, good times. Now, I said I didn't have any major issues using these chain rings together with the 12 speed Durace front earlier, but I did have to fiddle around and do a lot more trial and error to get this to shift up to par with the previous Eastern chain rings. And I would say the Eastern chain rings was probably about 95% in terms of shift quality. These are maybe 90% in that regard. For the most part, uh, the shifting is uh, like spot on, no issues at all. But there are a few occasions when the chain seems to slip off one of those shift pins. And that basically means I have an extra quarter turn of the crank to complete that shift. It also seems like the chain doesn't always want to slip over the chain ring teeth like immediately. That doesn't really affect the shifting, it's more like an extra noise once it eventually does. I'm guessing the new uh, EVO rings will take care of those issues and knowing myself uh, I will probably find out if they do before not too long. But for now, this is satisfactory for me. I haven't had any drop chains out on the road or any other major malfunctions. But it should definitely be said, if you want nothing but the best shifting, especially on the front, there's nothing like Shimano's own products. And that's probably what a normal person would choose anyway. For me though, this was the last piece of the puzzle. And now I can finally pencil in that number and officially join the UCI Illegal Sub 6.8 Club. Now, of course, I know there's still a few areas on this bike I could shave a few more grams, but in the end, this is not a show bike with a single bottle cage, no Garmin mount, claiming uh, like sub five without pedals. I expect this to carry me along on all my all day long adventure rides without having to worry about parts falling apart or how many shifts I have left before my full carbon fiber light chain ring disintegrates. So yeah, this is it. It doesn't mean I'm done with shaving weights. It just means I need to put my focus elsewhere. Now, if you were looking for a proper installation guide for this crank, uh, you could always check my original video. But uh, instead of that though, I would recommend you download the new, much improved manual for this crank uh, from the THM website. Uh, that was my main complaint the first time around. I couldn't really make sense of that original manual, but the new one, is spot on so definitely check that out now if you're thinking that math didn't really add up for the weight saving uh, you would be completely right there's one more thing i changed on the bike and that is the bar tape i went back to my favorite tape the most super light and it actually saved me another 40 grams over my old physique tape that I tried and that is a much more economical way to save a few grams than buying a crank for a gazillion dollars so there you go all right should we end another video with a sneaky little descent This is very narrow and twisty, so there, there's definitely not going to be any uh, speed record broken. Very popular winter climb because it's not too high in terms of elevation. 
Hey, here we go. A little bit apprehensive of if there's any wet spots, which means ice. And windy. Also, the road surface is not the best in the world. Too crappy road. Ah. Definitely don't think about it as much when you climb up. Going down though. Love those viewers. I think that's the uh, second time I saw that guy today. I think he's doing repeats. Goddamn. Whoops. Yeah. construction so I get a bit chill. That's pretty much it. Well hope you enjoyed that and you did and if you want to I will catch you in the next one. Peace because I'm sick in the brain sick in the brain Thank you.